This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Where are we? We're in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. <laughs> Still, and even more every day. And to my left is Sharon Moriwaki. She's a clean energy person from the beginning of time. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Good to be co -chair here. Co-chair and uh, co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and co-host of this show traditionally for many, and, many and, years. And we've had such a great year this year. And we're ending it with Rocky Mold. Okay, Rocky Mold. He's the energy program director for the new, brand new, charter-created climate change sustainability and resiliency Office, Office yes. of the City and County of Honolulu. Yeah. And he is its very first very energy first, very, program manager. Yeah. And the other yeah. people there are notable are the executive director, um, Josh Stanbro, and the deputy director, Justin Gruenstein, who we know from back when. He was on the yeah, forum. With the city. Yeah. Before yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Well, welcome. welcome. Welcome to the show and welcome to the, the, the office, so to say. Thank you very much. It feels great to be here. Yeah, yeah. it's a really exciting uh, time for the city and county to, to be embarking on this, uh, this new initiative, um, relatively new initiative. I mean, a lot's been going on, as we know, in Hawaii and in the state, um, but this is a, a new charter-mandated office um, with the city and county. So David, how? Yeah. Oh, tell us about what, you, what your office is and how energy some energy manager plays a role and who all is in the office and what your expectations are. For That's a in. multiple compound question. Oh, I know, I know. I was just so excited. Yeah. So, yeah. so I want to know everything there is to know. Take, take it <laughs> in apart a short time. in any way you want. In like. any way you want. So <laughs> the office was created uh, in the November election. Um, uh, it was a charter mandate, charter, uh, man, uh, charter. amendment number seven. Uh, and uh, it, it created the office of Climate Change, Sustainability, and Resiliency for the City and County of Honolulu. It won by a 16-point margin. So we have a good um, electoral win behind That's our right. sales. That's the people spoke. Yeah. yeah. Um, and at the, at the same time that that happened, um, we had been applying for and we won a grant from the Rockefeller That's Foundation right. to create um, a resiliency plan and, and, and fund a ah, chief resiliency I see. officer. I so um, we hot, the city hired Josh Stambro as our first uh, chief resiliency officer, and he is also the executive director of the Office of wow. Climate Change, Sustainability, and Resiliency. Wow. Uh, and then you mentioned and is that Justin. Part of the hundred uh, sustainable cities is that it, what you're? It you're is. It's grant? part of the one hundred resilient cities grant, oh, and we were one of the, the the final cities to get in. So it's a really big thing for, wow. for Honolulu. Yeah. And so we're going to be. Uh, working with our peers in places like New York and Paris oh, and wonderful. Medellin, Colombia, and you know around the world, these big metropolises that are dealing with these challenges of climate change and resiliency um, yeah. in myriad, very complex ways. And we'll bring our own Honolulu-specific yeah. approach to oh, that. That's exciting! Wow. Yeah. So, uh, give us a short bio, would you? So, I'm originally from New Jersey. Uh, I moved here seven years ago now uh, my, with my wife. My wife is from here, born here. Um, uh, and she dragged me back here kicking and screaming. Um, <laughs> but when I arrived here, um, I, prior to arriving here, I had been working uh, in New York uh, as a, an, an equity analyst. And I was looking a lot at energy companies. And when I looked at Hawaii and something that I could do in Hawaii, I noticed that the solar industry was booming. Uh, huh. So I, uh, I first started, uh, I partnered up with um, some acquaintances of my wife, and we, we were wholesaling uh, solar panels into oh. the Hawaii market. Uh, they were Chinese uh, solar panels, and what happened was there was a there was a tariff dispute, um, a dumping anti dumping tariff was imposed on them. So I went looking for a job, and I started working for the state. Um, and with the state, I worked for the depart um, the state energy okay. office. I was an energy analyst for them, and then I ended up over at the Public Utilities Commission as an economist. Oh, wow. Mm. What a nice roadway to sustainability. Yeah. 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 So yeah. maybe you can help me with a couple of conceptual things. Uh, first is, um, I think we've, we know what sustainability is. I think, it, among other things, it's Sharon's middle name. <laughs> <laughs> but what is resiliency? What is that? And how does it differ mm. from sustainability? Well, so the Rockefeller Foundation has been doing a lot of work on resiliency, and that's what our grant, uh, you know, where our grant comes from to, to create a resiliency strategy. 
And they see resilience uh, as the ability to um, withstand a shock mm. or a stress um, and come back even stronger after it. Um, so for instance, a, a stress is sort of a long-term chronic problem like income inequality or infrastructure mm -hmm. dilapidation or these kinds of things. A shock is a tsunami or an earthquake uh, or a financial crisis or something like yeah. that. And something unexpected. Un unexpected, yeah. right? Yeah. And so resiliency is the ability to deal with both of those things mm. um, um, and come back even stronger. So, for instance, as we saw in, in Puerto Rico recently, um, you know, they were hit by Hurricane Maria. But really, for a long time before that, um, Puerto Rico had been going through a, a, a sort of a chronic decline in sort of economic mm -hmm. uh, growth. And they couldn't people were, pay their bills. They couldn't mm -hmm. pay their bills. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the utility there was having issues. So their grid, their grid was really fragile. Oh. And so when Irma hit, the grid is still not fully up, as I know it. So. You know, resi a resilient strategy would be a strategy that would build that grid back even better oh. than it was this time, and and really provide for the, continue to provide for the people of Puerto Rico. So we're looking at you know through res we're looking at how we can build resilience here in in Honolulu, mm -hmm. uh, and learn and learn from folks around the world. So how do you really, do that? Uh, well, you know, right now. Um, the process is for the first quarter, um, that we have a grant from the Rockefeller Foundation. And this first quarter, what we're going on is we're, we're listening to the people. We're going around and taking a survey and presenting our point of view um, and, and finding out from folks out there what they see as our, our chief stresses and, mm. and, and, and vulnerabilities. Mm. And from there, we're going to uh, move on and create a strategy to to a climate ap adaptation and action plan. Actually, is what they call it, a cap, and that will have a strategy for how we become more resilient and deal with these things. So let's make a case study. Oh, oh okay. Case study. Uh, let me just one more definition. One more definition. Okay. So adaptation. We always keep on hearing the, the term adaptation and mitigation, and that's all part of the mix. Yeah. Yep. So how, um, as you go around listening and putting together the adaptation plan. Does that mitigation come in, or where, where is mitigation of that? Is it stopping it, or is it, you know, what, what, what part of that well, equation it, is it? It, it kind of goes in cycles, right? Okay. And I think for a, lot, for a long time in Hawaii, we've been really focused on mitigation. And really, mitigation is about reducing greenhouse gas emissions, reducing those. Um, whereas adaptation is dealing with what's going to, what you know is going to come. I see. And so, so it's more preparatory. Yeah, yeah it's more like yeah. preventive and, and preparatory, whereas mitigation is about like um, focusing on, on, really, on getting greenhouse gas emissions and, and, and combating climate change. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Okay. So if, mm -hmm. if I were just an observer, or maybe a, a member of the electorate, and I voted for this amendment, yeah, um, I would be most concerned about the climate change part because I see that as a big risk. I think most people do. They believe in climate change as opposed to the administration in Washington. Uh, and they think <laughs> that it's coming, whatever it is, and that something should be done about it to protect our society and so forth. So I would, I would structure a, a, a case study on the basis of the greatest risk that I see. I mean, well, like, likely to happen bad weather, really, really bad, extremely weather, you know. That, that uh, the Iniki um, kind of weather and it'll really you know sweep up, sweep our island clean, mm -hmm. um, which you know in my view is every day but we have a nice sunshiny day is mm. one day closer to that. Yesterday was raining really okay, bad. Okay, well, that, was, that wasn't Iniki, but that was a, yeah. maybe that was a reminder. <laughs> a reminder. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to yeah, get extreme bad, weather yeah. in my view. And so we have the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center. You must know about them. Mm -hmm. uh, right across the street, they come on the show every now and then. Um, so the question is, you know, how do you interface with that kind of risk, shock risk? Because mm -hmm. you know it's coming. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, how can you build that in? And by the way, the people out there that you're going to talk with and ask their opinions about, they don't know anything about that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so how are you going to find out what the real weather risks are mm -hmm. and how you mm -hmm. get resilient about it, how you mitigate mm -hmm. and how you, you know, save our lives when this happens? Because life will be in jeopardy when this weather hits. Yeah. So, um, I'm relieved to tell you that we've, that the, we've thought of this and Bye. we actually have uh, appointed a, I think they've been, been nominated and they're waiting approval, a climate change commission. 
made up of scientists oh, who here. are going to here in UAG. Hawaii, University. such as Chip Fletcher, Chip Fletcher. I was gonna McKenna that, Kaufman, yeah. and others yeah. who, are, who have been nominated on this commission uh, to be on this commission, and they're going to inform us with the best science. And that was actually explicitly written into the charter. Mm. It was to inform decision makers and the electorate on what is the, sci what does the science mm. tell you and how do you create mm. policies based on the best science That's that we great. know. Because usually the academic stays in academe and the, the people out here do our thing and it doesn't connect. So if you can have the both working together right. and advising, that's wonderful. Right. That's okay, so Fletcher et al., they're going to tell you we're going to have bad weather. And it's going to inundate Waikiki, mm -hmm. the engine of our economy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to you know, affect our systems uh, or our public systems, many of which are controlled by the city, actually, mm -hmm. water, sewage, and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's going to do terrible things to our roadways mm -hmm. and our homes, electrical systems. Mm -hmm. <gasps> terrible things. <laughs> okay? Um, so now you know this. I mean, it, it doesn't take a, a lot of scientists to figure this out. I could figure this out. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, actually an academic like Sharon. Sharon is an <laughs> academic. She could tell you too. <laughs> so what do you do then? Um, so we're, we're starting the process. We're building plans to, to deal with this right now. And, you know, obviously it's, it's the challenge of our time. And, you know, I'm, it's great to be part of the solution going forward. And, you know, that's why, you know, Mayor Caldwell is so... Um, it's so great to have Mayor Caldwell behind us all the way in creating this office and all of the energy that he puts into it and the team that he's put together across the government. I mean, we're motivated. We, we recognize this problem. It's why back in June, Mayor Caldwell, along with Governor Ige and the three other um, Hawaii mayors, mm -hmm. committed to stay into the Paris Climate Accord, uh -huh. even though the federal government yeah, you know, yeah. had dropped mm -hmm. out. So we understand the risks here and the, and the potential costs, and we're taking it on. And we're so vulnerable that we're really yeah. happy okay. that this has come together. To go down yeah. the, the, the path of the, of the case study. Mm -hmm. um, so now we, we find that we've got to do things. We identify these, these, risks, these shock risks, and we look at it from a municipal point of view. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we're going we're gonna, to you know, reinforce things. We're going to develop systems chain telephone things, mm -hmm. communications things. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be able to marshal forces right. and resources to deal with it. Okay, um, It's a plan. Mm -hmm. okay? I, I get a rash with any plan <laughs> because I see the shelf, the plan, and the dust. I yeah. see it all yeah. together. Yeah. We've had this conversation. Yeah. So what happens with the plan? Are you going to go out there and talk to people in the street? What's going to happen? Well, um, you know, luckily we have a lot of communication with our federal partners at DOD, with our state partners, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a lot of communication going on. The key is to, is to stay in, you know, in communication with how to deal with these things. We have at least yearly you know, you know, uh, exercises where we work with them. And I, I apologize that I don't know all the specifics of this stuff. You know, so my colleagues do. You know, we have a, a, a control center you know, right, you know, for the city. Um, um, that, that deals with these things and has a whole plan in place. And you know, I, can, I can assure you that we are thinking about this. Going forward, I mean, there are some really good ideas about how to, how to create sort of resilience hubs. It's one sort of idea that we've heard from other jurisdictions where there are areas that you're, you're, you're positive you have, you know, the shelter and maybe some, you know, distributed generation to, you know, be able to, you know, um, fire up someone's cell phones, you know, to, for communication. You notice from Puerto Rico, People were driving miles and, and expending valuable, you know, you know, fuel and petroleum to get to a place where they could get cell phone service to yes, communicate I to their loved ones. Yes. Mm. So these kinds of things that we couldn't have foreseen about resilience are becoming more important. So it's really about you know having that holistic plan and staying in communication with all of the the, the parties that are going to be able to help people in, the, in those situations. So once this plan is formulated, is that it goes to city council. What, what is the process so that once it's in place, we all know this is what we follow? Because sometimes plans, as Jay said, sits on the shelf. Yeah. It's really nice in the process, but you know, I, I apologize. This isn't that isn't my area but of expertise. Yeah. So, so that, that, I'll that, find. That, I, I promise. Another that, month, we're going to ask I'm you. Gonna, that. I'm going to look. I will look into it and and have and get that stuff to you. I, I do know that you know my you know, the. The deputy, our deputy director, Justin Gruenstein, was very involved in these plans, so he is much more informed on them than I. Okay, okay. we're going to take a okay. short break. Yeah. It's Rocky Mould, Sharon Moriwaki. And when we come back, the magic word is going to be desiccation. A what? 
Rocky knows what I'm talking oh, about. Okay, exactly okay, you were about. doing some practice. I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. great. great. Yeah. And I could learn what desiccation <laughs> is. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Make it a better Try a little more, more than every more. Let's do what we can. Aloha. I'm Tim Apichaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thanks. You can show this picture. We're back. We're live. Oh. We're, we're here with Rocky yeah. Mould of the, uh, of the yeah, city. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Climate yeah. Change, Sustainability, and resi Resiliency Office. Not even and although she may this. not realize that she's on the air, oh. we're, we're here with Sharon <laughs> Murray Waki, too co-host of this program and co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, uh, referred to by its beloved members as HEPF. Yeah, okay. Where were we now? Okay, Rocky's going to tell us what desecration yeah. No, not no. desecration. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it? I thought it was... Oh. Desiccation. Oh, desiccation. Yeah. Okay, what does it mean? <laughs> you know, it just the word popped into my brain, and I, and I know now where I first met you. Right, so li liquid... So... We first met is uh, I, I was a part of a project that that put a solar powered uh, desiccant on top of the Whole Foods in Kailua, oh. and what a desiccant does is it sucks humidity out of the oh, air okay. to dry the air. And the the um, premise behind this project was that by by drying air and putting it through the HVAC system on top of the Whole Foods, you were lowering the cost for for air conditioning and for refrigeration. So all of those loads would go down and you would save energy or somewhere so the around 30%. So the moisture and the water, yeah. what, what does that do? It so in order to, the load? In order to cool the air, you know, uh, moisture is what's called latent heat. There's sensible uh -huh. heat and latent heat. And in order to cool the air, you have to get rid of that latent heat first. And so to get rid of that latent heat, it, it becomes easier to do that if you have pre-treating uh, of that air. And this solar-powered array was pre-treating the air. So oh. thank you for remembering oh. that. Well, I, I, yeah. remember, yeah. I remember the day I met you how impressed I was that a Wall Street stock analyst <laughs> could come and learn technology and do technology and do a project of that sophistication. It's very sophisticated. And it strikes me to, to ask you this. I mean, so in this plan, there's got to be all kinds of technologies that you can and should implement mm -hmm. in order to save us, you know, when, when what was it, the shock things happen. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be very well qualified to deal with those technologies. So I'm part mm -hmm. of my, as the energy pro program manager, part of my uh, plan, my, my role is to, I have to say, there, there are, each department within the city has some really great folks that are, that, that are in, in control of the budgets and the projects that are, that are looking at you know, reducing our energy use. And part of our, one of our mandates is to green and clean and make more efficient all of our you know, mm -hmm. energy operations and to lead by example at the city. So we're actually um, looking at you know, funding a, an energy audit and taking a look at all oh, of our wow. facilities and fleets. Great. Um, to see how we can, you know, reduce energy use, reduce greenhouse gas emissions to our mandate. Um, as you as you may remember, um, back in, on December twelfth, um, the the mayor Caldwell, along with the three other oh, mayors, announced yes, uh, yes. a um, a, transportation. a transportation goal to go one hundred percent public and private ground transportation to renewable by twenty forty five. But before that, we're going to try to get our entire city fleet hmm. by 2035 to 100% renewable wow. fuels. Very good goal. And cheer oh, up. The yeah. Tax Reform Act yeah. just signed by <laughs> your president <laughs> does not terminate the, uh, the, the, the tax credit, right. federal tax credit on electric vehicles. So, so at that's least a couple going. of years more to go on that. But, you know, this leads me to the next question that Sharon will undoubtedly ask you. <laughs> I'll let I, you I ask. feel it strongly. <laughs> okay, so we have the state. The state in this state has enormous power. I mean, more than other states. This, this is a state that imbues its government with a lot of power. And, and um, 
and we have the counties, and the counties only deal with bare islands, you know. Uh, but now it appears, at least in the energy environment, in the energy world, the counties are doing a lot. Um, and more interesting yet is that the counties are actually talking to each other at this conference you had uh, just right. uh, mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago. Right. Which, I mean, I think that's really sort of historic in, in terms of the sharing of power and responsibility within the state of Hawaii. The counties are talking to each other, developing plans. Um, they're not. They're not stopping. They're just sailing ahead. They're making, you know, deals with the, the Paris Accord all, all by themselves. They don't need any state authority to do that. Just do it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is actually inspiring. But but how does that work when this? Don't you have a, a sort of preemption at the state <laughs> level where they're supposed well, to do it and you're doing it anyway? Well, it, it, the first thing we can do is lead by example. And you know, what I was talking about before, the the, the looking at our own, you know, um, facilities and fleets and, and bringing down our energy use, you know, on, in our own house. I mean, that's something that we can do uh, clearly. Uh, I mean, and then, the city, yeah, city yeah, facilities. The city facilities, city fleets. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, in terms of, you know, hooing up with the other counties, one thing that we're doing that's really exciting is, is a data collaborative. So I'm working with my counterparts over at the mm -hmm. counties mm -hmm. to really, like, create um, a, day, a story about uh, the data that we're going to gather and what kind of metrics we're going to put oh, around our own counties and our own city's data use. So we're really going to start collaborating around that. And it's not just with the other my counterparts at the counties, but we're going to be reaching out to stakeholders across the Hawaii ecosystem mm, yeah. um, to build this data collaborative well, that's great, going forward. You've got that dashboard that you worked on, right, for that's Hawaii. Right. Yeah, that you, you, yeah, yeah, your, your dashboard, right. yeah. yeah. So, so that's going to be just sort of the foundation yeah. that you can add on right. more. Because really, like, the idea behind having all this data together and then visualizing it and presenting it in, a, in, a, in an actionable way is that to get everyone on the same page, to get everyone understanding the same problems that we face, and, to, and, and that really is the first step to going forward and, and solving those problems. Yeah. And then going forward, you know, we're going to be looking at, um, you know, our transportation mandate, obviously, opportunities for renewable generation and, and you know, demonstration projects on city properties and facilities. Uh, these kinds of things we'll be, we'll be looking well, at. Exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, it's think? exciting, yeah. but it's also inspiring. It is. It's a, it, it's a change, and it's a good change, and it's a change where more people in more governmental agencies in, in the state are thinking about this thing. Uh, and thinking about it in a larger sense. You're not just limiting yourself to energy technology. You're seeing how that works in connection with sustainability and resiliency, which we really have to think about. But even better than that, you're reaching out to other counties. And so, you know, there's a collaborative element here that did not exist before you started doing this. Mm -hmm. And so I commend you and the other counties, all the other commissions. We've talked to them. And we know, we've seen it, and we think this is a really, I do anyway, and you, yeah. a really a good direction for you to go in, for us to go in. And I think this means that Hawaii has its own special kind of resiliency, don't you think, around yeah. sustainability and energy and, and the future, protect ourselves. Yeah. And it's not only physical, but it's really the people. I mean, it's, it's yeah. really it's the... It's grassroots yeah. is yeah. what it is. Everybody working together and yeah. seeing a common mission, yeah. You know? you know, one of the questions we ask in our survey about resiliency is, what, what, are, you, what are you most proud about uh, Honolulu, you know, in, in Honolulu? Mm -hmm. And it's Aloha Spirit and Hokulea. And oh. so these are those... Wow. So a, a big element of resiliency is this connectedness and, and you know, feeling of ohana that we have here. That's in, in, great. And what you water. folks are doing is taking energy, which people say, oh, turn the lights on and off, to a really broader and more um, uh, foundational right. um, driver for us. Yeah. And we didn't see that connection before. Because really, so. it's not just, you know, turning on the lights and, and generating that. And that's super important, don't get me wrong. But it's also how you plan for the future and the land use planning that you have for the future, how you connect you know, transit-oriented right. development and rail to this new spine that we're going to be building. And it's this holistic vision of where we're going in the future. And really, it's about, we've, we've seen this vision. Uh, Mayor Caldwell has, you know, has been very strong on this, and we're really just you know, here to start putting the pieces in place That's to good. achieve that. To start actually acting on it. Yeah. 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 So great. we're here at the, at the very mm, tip. Well, the end of 2017. And, it is. How and sad is that? But right, maybe the, it's the very cusp. hopeful. It's oh, hopeful yeah. for 2018. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what about um, 2018? 
What, you know, you mentioned you're going to put the plan together. I yep. guess that's going to happen within 2018, Rocky? Yes. And, and so what else is there beside that? Are there more meetings scheduled among the counties? What, can you give us a precis about what's going to happen next year? Right. So um, one of the big things coming up is we have the Maui Energy Conference. I'll be at the Maui Energy Conference. I'm sure my counterparts will be there as well. Um, that's going to be, I hope you guys will be there. Um, and, then, and, then, and then there's Verge coming up, and I know we're working on having some, oh. some, some events uh, around. That's some, good, because everybody at Verge, goes to these. Verge. Verge. So there are more, more you know, meetings that are going to be taking place. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of it's just going to be focusing on, you know, getting to the brass tacks of putting the plan together and starting to implement some of these, some of these ideas that we've had. Um, so, yeah, I think, there's, I think 2018 is going to be a lot of setting the foundation for, for things to come yeah. uh, in, the, mm -hmm. in the next, in the okay. next couple of years. Yeah, well, yeah it's really about planning right now and, and putting together that resiliency plan. And you know, we're going to hear about them, you know, in, in um, our energy briefing. In January, January 10th, January 10th yeah. because um, I think Josh is going to speak and all the counties are going to speak on what yep. they're yeah. doing. We so like the counties. We, we yeah. like the counties. Yeah. But here's one thing. That's in the legislative auditorium there in the legislature. And what strikes me, I have this vision of you or others from your office coming down to the legislature mm -hmm. and educating the committees and the chairs and the legislative officials that are involved in energy and environment and all that about what you're doing. You could probably teach them a thing or two. You could probably mm -hmm. show them things because you're looking at it from a very broad sustainability, you know, uh, uh, wait, resiliency <laughs> model. You but also, but also they're on the ground too. They can mm -hmm. see the actual impact on people. Right, you're, you're you grassroots. Yeah. So, so I hope, helpful. I mean, I, and I see and I hope that you will be there in those committee hearings telling them about the, the product of your efforts so they have the benefit of this in shaping whatever policies are coming across their desk. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. And obviously, we're here to, to help in any way we can to, to, to you know, put forth our, our, you know, our common goals and our, our common you know, you know, agenda. Great. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it's That's really wonderful. good to have this conversation. Yes. Sharon, you know we're out of time. You know yes, I know. Sharon, it's, it's up to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Summarize and close. <laughs> OK, this has been a wonderful conversation. And uh, I really appreciate Rocky coming down here for our last program of the year and telling us not only about desiccation, <laughs> but also the larger picture from desiccation to sustainability and resilience. And, and we're really looking forward to the plans that you're coming up with and more importantly, how it's going to guide us as we work towards sustainability, resilience, and a better Hawaii. Thank you. Rocky. Thank you, Rocky. Thank, Thank you, you, Sharon. Thank you, James. Aloha. 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 Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Whoa. Oh. <laughs>